this is this acceptable not really well i regret my choices if i don't just do my hair be between that and whether or not i get this video recorded so so i think we'll just go with dodgy hair hi everyone so today i'm talking about my 2018 beauty favorites um, I did record putting some of these things on my face. I didn't do the eye makeup just because I didn't really have super specific favorites other than like colors and a handful of palettes. So I just didn't want to edit me putting on eye makeup because it takes forever. So I'm going to talk about foundation first. Again, I don't have super specific favorites, but what I'm wearing today is the Glamouflage Full Coverage Foundation and I mixed the lightest shade uh, 1500 ivory with 1502 vanilla which is the third shade the 1501 um, ultra light is a little bit more peachy and vanilla is more yellow I'm gonna mix that on my back of my hand and move as quickly as I can I think I might have gotten more of the vanilla than I wanted but that's all right I'd rather have it a little too dark than too light so I have a whole review video on this. It's a really tricky formula for me to apply personally, but it wears amazingly all day. I don't powder it. It looks beautiful even in full sunlight. It's really great. It just sometimes it looks so awful I have to take it off. So it's like I love that foundation and if I want something to look flawless all day that's what I'll go to but I make sure I have enough time to take it off and put it back on again because there's no guarantee it's gonna actually go on my face nicely but the second favorite is just the shade expansion of so many different foundation lines so many more people have accessibility to more than one or two foundations and that goes on the pale end of the spectrum as well as the deep end of the spectrum there's still a ton of work to be done as far as accommodating people of color in foundation lines and bronzers and contours all that stuff but at least there's been progress made and i personally been benefit from the more and more lines having very fair pale foundation shades. Prior to this there were so few selection as far as very fair shades go. Now there are things that are a little bit light, too light for me to wear in more than one line and more drugstore uh, lines are coming out with very fair foundations. It's awesome. My best foundation matches are the um, Smashbox Studio Skin in 0.1, which is one of the new shades in a shade expansion. Clinique Even Better Foundation in CN 0.5 Shell, also a new shade. And ColourPop No Filter Foundation in Fair 05, which did is a new foundation line and that came out as in part of the launch. Um, but yeah, just having so many more options is amazing. I will link my Palest Foundation swatch video, my foundations playlist, all that stuff in case you are curious and finding out more about foundation for very fair skin. I've got a lot of stuff out there for you. So then I guess we'll talk about concealer. I do really have only one thing that I would consider a favorite. I wore the NARS uh, Radiant Creamy Concealer in Chantilly for a good amount of the year, though this now just doesn't seem to be sitting under my eyes very well. And honestly everything is sitting kind of poorly under my eyes but this one has really been so noteworthy for me all right cover effects uh power play concealer in n fair one i just felt kind of adrift in the concealer situation because things that were very light tend to make my under eyes look gray because of the discoloration and they don't have enough like of that yellow or peach or some sort of color to them so this is good really good coverage it has a little bit of that yellow undertone to it and it doesn't make my under eyes look gray if i set it with my favorite powder the nars right light reflecting setting powder pressed then i can get all day wear no creasing and not look super dry by the end of the day which is highly highly noteworthy because i have major problems with that nars uh, light reflecting setting powder pressed if I need to set a foundation, this is the one that's not going to make it look awful on my skin. Almost always. Not always, but almost always. Um, this has a little bit of a sheen to it, though it does mattify and 
It's the only powder I've used that can sometimes, with some foundations, not cause like my sunglasses to rub off the foundation immediately. I don't know if it would last for like a couple hours, but at least like 30 minutes in the car, it will keep my foundation there sometimes, which is really surprising because I thought nothing could do that. So that's pretty awesome. If you have dry, um, texture issues with fine lines and wrinkles and crepiness. This I feel like is a really, really good option. Hidden gem, I feel like more people should try this that have trouble with powder looking too heavy and cakey on their skin because this one is so nice. I'm 38 and my skin does not like powder. It just, the more products I put on, the worse my skin looks. It really does not wear makeup very well. So this one has really been so good for me this year. Um, foundation sponge. So I've used lots and lots and lots and lots of Real Techniques Miracle Complexion sponges, but honestly, this sponge, which I use to apply my foundation today, the Flower Beauty uh, sponge, is just holding up to washing so much better. It's so pleasantly squishy, and I really enjoy that. It, it seems to apply foundation the same as the Real Techniques, but it's not cracking and falling apart like my Real Techniques sponges have been lately. So I definitely will be buying more of these because it just holds up Better, applies nicely and just feels so soft and delightful. The only downside is it doesn't really have a pointy part so it's kind of hard to do under eye setting powder. I'll live with it though. I, I don't mind. It's not gonna it's not the end of the world. It's not a deal breaker. Um, okay so for eyeshadow um, I love green, olive, mustard and the beauty industry has also been finally cranking out some more palettes with those options. Okay, so I've got some thoughts about the greens. Um, <sighs> if these are discontinued, but if you see them and you really like greens, these are really easy to work with. It's the L'Oreal Infallible Paints in Army Camo. I'm quite sure I have a video where I show using this for a super, super simple, like olive mustard eye look. And Pick this up if you can find it. It's gonna be really cheap because it's discontinued and it's really, the lighter shade's really easy to work with because it's a satin, it's not a metallic. So even if you have crepey eyelids, this is not gonna look horrendous. So this is definitely a favorite. I used that a lot earlier in the year. Um, something that kind of just fueled the green, swampy green um, desires is this Gemini Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette. I did not get it the first time it launched and I kind of regretted it and then I pounced and bought it when it was back and then I discovered that yes there is actually a pretty good dupe out there. So I made a video um, showing an eye look with the melt on one eye and then the dupe from Morphe. I know not everybody is a fan of Morphe. I get that but I have some other options for you so hang with me. But you can really get, if you're in it for the greens, you can definitely dupe the greens with this Morphe. It's the 35M Boss Mood Palette. Is that right? Doesn't sound right. Yeah. 35M Boss Mood. You can totally get this eye look, uh, except for, I, didn't, I used a different um, palette for the gold on my lid, but for the greens, you can totally get all the greens out of this palette. If you're looking for something, an alternative to Morphe, I have some other things. Some other things that are not very popular, some other things that are not great quality. <laughs> you can make the decision. So, with the not popular, but I really enjoy it, Anastasia Subculture. It is a little tricky to work with, I agree, but I feel like it's totally workable and I find all of the Anastasia palettes to be a little tricky in one way or another. And also the one, the shades that a lot of people had issues with, the matte, like green teal shades, I find those are challenging to work with across pretty much every formula. But I love the colors in this one. It's totally got that mustard situation, plus the green olive um, over here. You can do, um, this electric shade actually is kind of similar to a similar vibe, I would say, because it's like a duochrome type thing as in that yellow green color in the Gemini palette and also the Boss Mood palette has a, a color like that. 
couple drugstore options. One works better than the other. Um, this is the Makeup Revolution. Uh, what is this one called? It's a Reloaded palette, and this one's in Division. So this is subculture, basically, but for Makeup Revolution. I find this challenging to work with, but if you're really on a budget and you want to try some of these kind of little more edgy, a little more trendy colors, this is definitely a way to go for but uh, the shimmers especially I find pretty hard to use. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but if you're really dying to have these colors, it's like seven bucks. You can get it on sale. It might be worth trying out to see how you feel about it. But if you can get this instead, I would definitely recommend this over that. Though you have, this is, I feel like you need to use a different palette in conjunction with this one for some of the look. You can get a couple cohesive looks out of this, but there are some shades in here that I find a little tricky to use without a different palette for mattes, unless you're wanting to do a full shimmer look. This is the uh, Rimmel Magnifies Jewel Rocks edition, and um, it has some really pretty, cool, funky, yellowy green, mustard, gr swampy, yeah, I did a, like a look I really like the th with this on Instagram that I may include, and I really like the lip I had on that. I felt it was just a really cool eye look, and this is also around seven dollars, and this is a lot easier to work with. So, I've had kind of hit or miss experiences with this Magnifies uh, format palette, but I do really like this one, and I think it's worth it for the seven dollars. Where a couple of the other ones I've tried, I didn't feel were worth it, and this has a really fun color selection. Also, Juvia's Place palettes. I love the formula of the shimmers in the Juvia's Place palettes. The, um, let me show this one. This, oh gosh, I like, I just love just about every color in this. This is the Nubian 2, and it's just so pretty. It's so pretty. The, the, oh my gosh, the shimmers are so good. The mattes are easy to use. Um, they're not so pigmented that you can just build them up. S not super slowly, it's not like you struggle with them, but it's not so much like you've got this full, intense, crazy, dark pigment the minute you get it on your eye. You can do pretty light layers of these that will not be patchy or funky looking and having fair skin it's kind of nice to have that option of either going uh, with full pigmentation or something that's not like super duper so smoky. I just love them. I bought almost all of the palettes. I, I don't have them all but I have a lot of them and they are beautiful. So good. You can get them at Ulta now and they often have sales and yeah, so I would definitely recommend holding out for a sale because you can get it for almost half price somewhat regularly. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about with eyes, which was a lot. So now, um, let me look at my list. I made a list because I knew I was going to forget stuff. So since one of my definite continued favorites has been liquid lips, um, I wore this one a lot and that's why I chose to show it today. It's the Sephora Cream Lip Stain in number 12 African Violet. It's an easy formula to wear and apply and I've had this probably for a couple of years and it still smells fine. The consistency is great so that's awesome. It hasn't gotten all chunky and clumpy and dried out which I really really appreciate it. Um, I don't know why they call it Cream Lip Stain. It's not a stain. It's just a matte liquid lipstick but it is beautiful and I love it. Another one that's a little bit newer to my collection but I also really enjoy is the ColourPop uh, Makeup Shayla collab um, Shade Day. This is a beautiful pinky purple. Um, straight purples, uh, cooler purples are a little harder for me to wear, but this one is a little bit, it's just pink enough that it's easy for me to wear. I was going to wear it today, but I decided to wear the Sephora one instead because I feel like I've worn this, this combo eye look plus lip recently, so I thought I would try the lighter shade instead of this one, but beautiful and I do think the ultra matte lips have gotten a little easier to wear a little more comfortable to wear fortunately they don't go all crumbly which some liquid lipsticks do I don't ever have crumbly issues they just can wear off in an unattractive way when you're maybe not expecting it while eating um, so yeah this 
is lovely. It's a little easier to touch up than something that goes a little funky and crumbly. Um, for traditional lipsticks, it's kind of painful to mention these because they're not available, but Lisa Eldridge has said that she's most like she's really she's working on bringing them back next year. So it's the Lisa Eldridge True Velvet Lipsticks. They wear really, really nicely. They're just a very nice formula and they're very luxurious and lovely. And they were more than I've spent on a traditional look, traditional lipstick ever. I'm quite sure. So this was really a splurge for me, but fortunately it's not just the packaging. It's not just the, the velvet appearance on the outside of the lipstick. They do wear beautifully and you can really get all day wear. And I did a swatch video, a lip swatch video along with a wear test. And I wore this for a very long time and it was still looking really good by the end of the day after eating, eating like real food. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. I also want to mention this one. I had zero good expectations for this and I w I've really, really enjoyed this. The color is a color that just works for me that I wasn't expecting. It's the Hank and Henry uh, Lip Aesthetic Matte Liquid Lipstick and Petal Pusher. This came in a boxy charm. It has a very strong kind of maybe I don't want to say, people say I think buttercream, but I don't think it's buttercream. To me, it's like almost a little tangy cake batter-ish. I'm, I'm not, I'm, it's just, it's okay. I don't love it. I don't dislike it. It's just a little intense. But other than that, I really like it. The wand picks up a good amount of product. You get enough, I think, for almost your whole lips, perhaps, with this. And the color is just, I I really did not expect to like this color on me and it's dark enough that I feel like I can wear it with a lot of makeup looks. I mean, I could have worn it today, to be honest. <laughs> I kind of want to switch, but I also kind of don't want to switch. Really, really nice. Um, I probably wouldn't buy this full price just because I don't tend to buy high end lip products, but I am so glad I got it in the boxy charm and I have enjoyed it a lot. One thing I wanted to talk about since I talked about liquid lipsticks, that's not always what I wear, but I would say probably the majority of the time I'm wearing a liquid lipstick. And this has made taking them off so much better. Uh, the Maybelline Superstay Eraser Lip Color Remover. This is just so easy to use. It's not the best lip color remover I've ever used. The e.l.f. one, which is in a squeezy tube and is a liquid, definitely works better. But this is just easy. I'm almost done with it. You just swipe it on, you let it sit for a minute, you wipe it off and you're done. There's no scrubbing, there's no nothing. And this will take off those Maybelline matte ink liquid lipsticks, which are challenging to take off with a lot of products. So I love the ease of this. Um, did I mention I think I was trying to say this, but I don't know if I actually said this. The downside, another downside to this is if you do accidentally take off some foundation when you're changing lipsticks or the like, it is really hard to recover from that because there will be a very noticeable edge and powder foundation, concealer, those are my two usual go-tos to filling in a gap. They just never seem to mesh well with this foundation once it has set. So. That is kind of a downside to this foundation, but otherwise it's lovely. It really is lovely. <laughs> but that lip color remover just make things so much easier, especially at the end of the night when I really don't, you know, my lips tend to be already pretty irritated and flaky and dry. The last thing I need to do is be like scrubbing them really hard to try to get a lip color off. And something like a lip color remover just makes it that much easier to wear liquid lipsticks. And I would say if you're going somewhere special and you're wearing a liquid lipstick and you're going to be eating or drinking, just pop that in your bag because you may need to be doing some major rehaul of your liquid lipstick look and it is really nice to have that option as opposed to trying to touch up which sometimes can go terribly wrong so yeah love that it's portable it's easy it's effective 
So for blushes, there were a handful of blushes that I basically wore all the time, especially the last half of the year, and continue to wear all the time. The Hourglass Mood Exposure Blush is my go-to blush so much of the time. Um, I don't wear it when I'm doing something like this. I think it would work okay, but it's I'm drawn to more of like an orangey peach option when I have this swampy green eye situation. I don't know why, but I love Mood expo Exposure. It's just a very natural flush on my skin tone and it's just easy and I love it. I wear it all the time. Maybelline Fit Me Blush and Buff. This is another one that it's like, what, what color is this? I don't even really know. And it's not very pigmented, but I use a very dense um, like buffing brush for foundation to apply this and it's lovely another really natural kind of neutral goes with just about anything i almost wore this today but then i was like you know it's not the best example just because it is kind of tricky to apply but if you don't mind applying it with a dense brush i think this is a great option for very fair skin and kind of a natural flush uh, the Flower Pots blush from Flower Beauty and Peach Primrose. I'm just all about the orange and pink blushes this year. This one is really nice. It's hard, I find, to find a peach or an orange that isn't too intense. And this one is pigmented and you have to take a very light hand when you have fair skin. But I really do enjoy it and have worn it a lot. And lastly, what I'm wearing on my face today, the L'Oreal Paradise Enchanted Scented Blush in Just Curious. This one is lighter, it's shimmery, more shimmery. This is matte, this is shimmery. And uh, this is just easier to wear. It does have a scent, which is kind of weird. I feel like the scent has faded. This is not a super tight um, seal or anything, so maybe the scent just kind of naturally dissipates over a while. So I'm glad this doesn't have that fruity scent to it as much anymore because that wasn't my favorite, but I really do like the color and the finish on this. And because it's not so heavily pigmented, it's just easier to use. Um, I have a couple skincare things that um, I'll just show pictures on the screen because I don't want to go get them and the baby is awake, so I got to wrap this up. I mean, come on, this cannot be a surprise. The Paul's Choice Resist Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense SPF 30. Everybody knew I was going to mention that because I talk about it in just about every video where I talk about my face. That stuff is like a primer. It leaves a grippy, weird finish. It is a little bit dark, so uh, it's not something I would wear if I'm not wearing foundation necessarily. But any day I am wearing foundation, that gets almost all foundations to really cling on and apply beautifully and wear throughout the day. It's so good. Now this foundation I'm wearing today, I will say that I do need to use a primer underneath it or it will start to get a little cracked looking. So today I'm wearing the Revlon Photo Ready Pore Reducing Primer and this combo works really well to keep it kind of flexible and looking good throughout the day. And sometimes what will work well for me on my chin is the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer, though I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. It's got a funny scent to it and it is crazy expensive. So. I, I, I use it, but I don't think I would recommend it just because it is so expensive and I don't find it that amazing. Like it will help some foundations wear on my chin, but most it doesn't help with. So it's definitely not a favorite, but it is something that I use. <laughs> That's an endorsement. Um, skincare. So yeah, that Paul's Choice SPF is like a primer. I love it. Um, even when my skin is more dry, I just hydrate my skin extra to compensate because it can feel a little drying if you don't have enough moisture on your face already. But it really, really, really helps the application and longevity of my a lot of my foundations and I love that. The Paul's Choice uh, Niacinamide 10% Booster, I feel like that's really helped my skin. The Using the Paul's Choice BHA 2% twice a day, I also feel like has helped a lot. But add, we take out that once a day and replace it with the Differin, which is a retinoid. Um, and I feel like that has also helped the texture of my skin. And the Paula's Choice Vitamin C Booster, I think, is helping with collagen production. I feel like my skin is getting towards to that like it's getting better like the the pores seem a little bit less noticeable after i've done the differin it seems to just kind of take a little bit of that 
oh, it, it increases cell turnover. So it's just helping the surface of my skin a little bit. I've got some very perennial forever and ever clogged pores and I feel like it's helping bringing those to the surface and just getting them out as opposed to them just kind of lingering forever. I really do feel like the different has helped though it is challenging to use because it really dried out my skin and made it very sore um, before I realized there were a couple things I could do put a moisturizer on first, let it sink in a little bit, then put the different on, mix it with an oil, and just straight up don't apply it to areas that get really dried out and cracked, which is basically around my mouth area. So now I just avoid those areas. I don't put it in the places where I get the uh, seborrheic dermatitis, which is in the folds of my nose and underneath my lip. So I avoid those spots and then just put it everywhere else, you know, to here, I don't go up under my eyes with it. And it's just, it's good. I feel like it's really made a difference in my skin and I don't necessarily see results from skincare all that much. But the BHA, I do feel like when I was using it twice a day before I started using the different, that definitely helped. And the niacinamide from Paula's Choice, I feel like did also make a difference in my skin. And I feel like it's been a long time since I've really seen a noticeable change in my skin as opposed to just maintaining things being okay. I feel like it's actually, I've had some improvements, which is really nice and exciting. Um, I think that's it for skincare. I don't think I have any other like super notable things on the skincare front. Is that what I'm gonna end on? I don't think so. Let's talk about highlight because I do have a lot of highlights that I really have been pretty consistently wearing throughout the year. Um, so more recent uh, discoveries, these Wet n Wild Loose Highlights, which I did a swatch video on my cheeks for uh, You Glow Girl and I'm So Lit, definitely work for very fair skin. And they're just so shiny and reflective. This is one of my more recent purchases. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Wet n Wild Loose Highlight in I'm So Lit. And also the ColourPop uh, Loose Highlights. This one's in Sugar Trap. I don't necessarily recommend this one unless you like actual glitter. Um, the ColourPop Super Shock uh, highlight and flexitarian. This one is so pretty, so shiny. It's not as dark as it looks in the pan once you actually apply it because it's just so, so reflective. And you can tap it on over foundation and it's not going to mess with your foundation, which is also great because it is kind of a cream. It's like a cream powder formula. It's hard to describe. It's not like completely like those uh, Stila Heaven's Hue highlighters, but it's something in the realm of something like that. Highlights that I wore a lot throughout the year, the Hourglass Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. Um, these again seem like they're gonna pe be pretty dark, but even when mixed all together, it's just, it's just shiny. And when you apply it with a brush, kind of buff it in, it gives you kind of a similar effect to what's going on here in my face. So this is really nice, but also, I don't know, it's probably not available anymore and very expensive, so, but I have many alternatives. <laughs> the Sleek uh, Solstice palette, this is kind of an old school favorite. Um, these are all very, very shiny, and I used actually this kind of yellowy gold shade a lot. It gives a very, very reflective, shiny, and it's not dark. Um, look and it doesn't look yellow despite how yellow it looks in the pan. These other two are also very very shiny but they're harder to work with I find. They can be a little bit um, harder on texture on your skin. I never use the cream because that's just too much of a hassle but this one the yellow gold is easy to use and very very reflective and I love that. I really love a good shiny dewy sweaty highlight. Another very shiny but also expensive highlight is the Natasha Denona Super Glow. It's comparable in price to the Becca highlights, though I like this one a lot more than the Becca highlights. And it looks dark, but again, when it's on your face, um, if you have extremely porcelain skin, it might be a little too dark, but um, it's just like very, very light, warm, um, like very light champagne, I would say, on my face. I don't feel like you can really see this color. You don't see like a stripe of that color on my cheeks. 
This one's very pretty, but again, it's like $38. Um, another one, very, very shiny, the J Cat You Glow Girl in Bella Rose. It's just kind of like an icy, icy pink. It almost looks on the skin. I feel like sometimes it can look a little whitish silver. Um, so if you're extremely fair and you're looking for a little bit more of a cool toned highlight that's not super pink, uh, this one's really, really nice. And it is one that the Taylor says doesn't, is, is, isn't too, it works pretty well when you have more textured skin. Um, I don't have a lot of texture on my cheeks, so I have a few bumps here and there, but nothing too strong. So I feel like it, I'm not, that's, not a primary concern for me. I just have those fine lines um, on the tops of my cheeks, with, which definitely some um, more metallic highlights can really catch on and be kind of bunched up around those lines. So especially things like the loose highlights, I feel like really play nicely on top of those lines, but also because of the skincare I've been doing lately and trying to keep my cheeks really hydrated, it's not as much of a problem as it can be if my skin's a little bit more roughly textured as far as like not using the different or the BHA often enough um, and if I'm not hydrating it enough so it's kind of a, a a couple things that affect how that looks on me right now so I think that's all I wanted to talk about here which was a lot of stuff let me know if you have any things that really stood out to you for this year and if you have any thoughts and feelings about where foundation where foundation where makeup is going in the next year hopefully we'll see more and more shade expansions in all different realms, not just foundation, um, you know, concealer and color products as well, because that is something that needs to be addressed for people on the deeper end of the spectrum for sure, by a lot of brands, a lot of brands, most of the, the brands. Um, yeah, so hopefully we just continue to see more progress and it's not just a trendy thing, it just is a an accessibility thing and things become more and more accessible. So I really hope that things continue in that direction. Um, as far as how my channel goes, we'll see. Um, I'm, the foundation videos are definitely something I enjoy doing and that's what seems to bring a lot of people to my channel. So I will continue doing foundation reviews though they are uh, time consuming to do and with the three kiddos and some, some health things going on with the kids, it's just been a little tough lately, but we'll see what, uh, what happens in the next few months hopefully things will get a little easier and uh, I can get back into a little bit more of a routine we'll see so yeah uh, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video today if you aren't already and want to be please do subscribe turn on the bell if you want a notification uh, every time I upload a video I hope you're having a wonderful day thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon I already said thank you didn't I well, double thank you. I hope you have a great new year too.